roses have the most incredible fragrance. It almost makes me forget where I am. That's a general idea. You know so much about me. I'd love to hear more about you. There's not much to tell. Your life has to be more interesting than mine. I mean, being stuck in this hospital. I'm sorry, you must get tired of hearing me complain. You don't complain. That's what's so amazing about you. Just be kind. No, I've never known a woman like you. I can't tell you how much your friendship means to me. Well, your friendship means a great deal to me, too. Careful of your head. This is the surprise. What do you think? Where are we? My most favorite place in the entire world. The floor, what's happening? It's moving. <laughs> it's supposed to, silly. We're on a boat. A boat? Yes. A houseboat. See? My grandmother left it to me. Oh, I wish you could see it. On the Franklin River? When I was a kid, we spent most of the summers here. I learned how to fish off this boat and swim. It's even nicer this time of year with no one around. How long are we staying? For as long as we want. We'll take her out mid-river and anchor her. Food, what about places to eat? We'll have to go on shore, the restaurants. Restaurants? Who needs restaurants? We got a, we got a rowboat tied to the starboard deck. If we need provisions, I'll just row ashore. You won't starve. I'm actually a pretty good cook. You hungry now? A little. Yes. I'll tell you what, after I show you around the rest of the boat, I will fix you something wonderful to eat. Okay? Okay. All right. Come on. A couple steps forward. Nothing to be scared of. <laughs> Come on. Three steps down. Now, one. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Into the galley. And over here on your left is the refrigerator. And, and over here is the stove. And you know, if we swing right around here, and open this door. Ta-da! The head. It's got a shower and a sink and, of course, a toilet. All the comforts of home. Oh, it all seems so nice. Oh, it's better than nice. It's perfect. I just can't understand why you brought me here. Well, I thought, thought you'd enjoy, you know, the, uh, the, the peace and quiet, the smell of the river, the solitude. Yes, but I, I can't stay here. No, this here. was meant to be. What was meant to be? You and me, here alone, forever. Carter, what have you planned? You know, did anyone ever tell you you ask a lot of questions now? I just, um... Yeah, right. Well, wondering. just sit down. sit down and relax. Just relax, okay? Here's a nice, comfortable sofa, and don't move. You might hurt yourself. pick up on this. Trevor, you couldn't have known. I should have smelled something. Charlie was telling me about this girlfriend he had, blonde hair, blue eyes at the hospital. It never even occurred to me that it was my doll. Didn't occur to any of us. Timmy knew. I mean, he knew this Kyle character was some kind of weirdo. I should have followed my nose on this one. Looks like he's off your trail. Because he's got a new victim. Yeah, my wife. No, she means you, Trevor. Me? Think about it. First a fire at your house, and then luring you to my apartment. You said yourself it was a setup, that he was planning to kill you. If he was half to me, why did he grab Natalie? Well, maybe this is the only way of getting to you. There's more to it. Yeah, like what? Maybe in the beginning all he wanted to do was hurt you. But now I think he's really fallen for Natalie. Why, have, why the hell haven't we heard something? It hasn't been that long, Trevor. When I think of this guy with her every second, what he could do to her? Let's think positive. Look, just because he's kidnapped her doesn't mean he's going to hurt her. I mean, I get the feeling that Carter really cares about her. Man, he almost worships her. Worships her? Oh, come on. What, what is it? Carter worshipped me, too. That didn't keep him from knocking me around. Yeah, but you don't think he really beat her, do you? Come on, she's blind. Nothing matters to Carter when he's angry. Where the hell is he taking her? 
Look, our people will come up with something soon. I can't sit around and wait for soon, Neil. Look, Trev, I know you're frustrated, but, you know, without a, a lead, what are we gonna do? We have to get inside this guy's head and find out what he's thinking. He's right. To catch him, we've got to understand him. I say we call Anatolian. The shrink? Yes, it's worth a shot. Trev? Get her. What are you doing? I'm trying to figure out where everything is. Just ask me. I found the perfect spot to anchor. Where? In the middle of the river, like I told you. What river, Carter? The River of No Return. Have you ever seen that movie, Marilyn Monroe? What do you want from me? Would you stop with all the questions? Listen, you take me away from my husband and my children. You bring me here against my will. It's no big secret, Natalie. We are going to live on this houseboat. Live here. And it's going to be great. I'm telling you, just you and me going with the flow. The outside world won't be able to touch us. Carter, what are you thinking of? Now, I have never led you on. I've never pretended to have romantic feelings for you. You know that all along, the only man I love is Trevor. Trevor is your past. I am your present and your future. You are no such thing. You still don't get it. I am in love with you. And I am going to do everything in my power to see that you return those feelings. And you'll see. You're going to love me like you've never loved anyone. Well, from what you've told me, a few things seem clear. First, He's replaced Miss Henderson with Natalie, and at the moment, I'd say she's the center of his attention. And he's probably feeling guilty toward her because he's responsible for her loss of sight. He's feeling guilty. Why doesn't he leave her the hell alone? This isn't a rational mind. To assuage his guilt, he's set himself up as her protector. Protector? He kidnapped her. I doubt Mr. Jones sees it that way. In his eyes, he's Natalie's salvation, and you're the enemy. I'm her husband. You're in his way. I suspect he blames you for what happened to Natalie. Blame me? How, how can he blame me? He's the one that set the damn fire. But you came out of it unscathed. That's not the way it was supposed to turn out. So now he wants to punish you. Sick and twisted. You, now, you're saying that he replaced Galen with Natalie? Why would he do that? Well, you told me that the three of you didn't let him anywhere near Galen. You're saying that by protecting Galen, we forced him to choose another victim? In essence, yes. He had to rechannel his hostility. Yeah, but why Natalie as opposed to some other woman? The prostitute? Or Dinah Lee? Well, there's Natalie's connection with Trevor, but my guess is he chose Natalie because he had more control over her. Because she's blind? It would appear Carter needs a woman who's dependent on him. The more dependent, the stronger he feels. Any idea what his next move could be? None. Could he hurt her? That depends on whether or not he feels threatened. How can Natalie threaten him? With men like Carter, when their systems go into emotional overload, something snaps. And when that happens, it, it sets them into irrational behavior they can't control. Like beating up women. It's a defense mechanism against anxiety. Carter was probably hit as a child, so now he's hitting back. It's his way of dealing with anger and resentment. If Natalie doesn't antagonize him, she may be perfectly safe. But the minute she does anything, anything at all, to make him feel anxious... If you could set him off. You can't keep me here. I won't stay. You'll do as I tell you. Carter, I do not love you. Can't you see that? That will change. Never. Don't say that. Don't say that. You have to accept this. No, you have to accept what I'm telling you. You will come to love me. It may take a while, but it is going to happen. No, it won't. I can't. It won't. It's a wide river, Natalie. A watery grave, for sure. Go ahead, John. Jump. Go on, no one will see you. 
Look, I can barely make out the shore myself. It's so foggy. If you want to commit suicide, I won't try to save you. If, on the other hand, you would just try to come to your senses... Me come to my senses? You already love me. You know, I mean, deep, deep in your heart, in spite of your misguided loyalty for Trevor. I love Trevor. No, love me. Who came to visit you in the hospital? Who, who brought you flowers? Who, who read you poetry? Brought you that music box? Why did I do that? To show you how much I love you. And in time, you began to return those feelings. No. If you want to die now, so be it. But it doesn't have to end this way. I can't stay here. Where will you go? Hmm? I mean, even if you knew which direction to swim in, you'd never make it to shore. The currents are treacherous. The water temperature alone could kill you. Face it, Natalie. I am your only chance for survival. Stop it! Stop it! A man with his pathology would want to isolate himself from the world. You don't think he'd be in a city? No, he's more likely to find some isolated area, somewhere he could have Natalie all to himself. Where? I mean, you were married to him, Galen. Is there any place you can remember him mentioning some spot off the beaten path? No. Look, I know that this is painful for you, but if you can remember anything, it might help Natalie. I'm sorry. Look, I'm, I'll keep trying. You know what I don't get? Where's Carter getting the dough to bankroll this little trip? Brooks sacked them. Didn't work long enough to get severance pay. Maybe he didn't go that far. No, somebody would have seen him. Does he have any family, friends? Only Marty, as far as I know. Marty? It's his sister. She's completely devoted to him. Heaven knows why. Has See? anyone contacted her? She probably wouldn't co cooperate, especially if she knew it was me. I mean, she, she holds me responsible for putting Carter in prison. Give me an address. Trevor, I haven't had contact with her in years. She could be married with a different name. Just give me an old address. I'll follow it up. I don't know. Oh, come on, Galen. You gotta remember something. Did she have a job? Yes. What? Where? She was an insurance adjuster at UICP, United so Insurance Companies of Pennsylvania. We'll get on it. Have the company check the records. Please, let me go. You don't have to take me back to the hospital. Anywhere on land will be fine. Haven't you been listening to me? We are staying here. But my children need me. Your children will be taken care of. I am their mother. And you haven't seen them for months. That's not true. You've been in the hospital. No, no. Timmy came to see me almost every day. And Opal brought Amanda whenever she could. The doctors were going to let me go home soon so I could be with them full time. I need to be with my children. I said no, didn't I? Think about your sister. Think about how devoted you were to her. Remember how she relied on you, especially when she was in the hospital? Marty. Your mother didn't come to see her at all, did she? When she was in the hospital. Mom should have taken better care of Marty. Yes, she should have taken better care of both of you. And now you're, you're asking me to abandon Timmy and Amanda? Do you know how that would devastate them? Just, just like it devastated you and Marty when your mother abandoned you. Carter, Amanda is just a baby. She needs to have her mother's arms around her and hear my voice. And, and Timmy, Timmy's gone through so much. He lost his father when he was born. And he almost lost me a year ago when Janet... Just please, don't let him suffer like that again. I'm sorry. Timmy needs love and guidance. And reassurance. I want to be home when he comes back from school. I want to be there for him. Please, Carter. Take me back. I need to be with my children. Don't let them grow up without their mother's love. Don't do to them what your mother did to you.
We appreciate you coming over, Dr. Tolan. I hope you find Natalie soon. Thanks, Dr. Tolan. Yeah, thanks. And uh, you've been a big help, too, but we'll take over from here on in, okay? Yeah, sure. Give me a call if you need it. Anna, I'll see you back at the hospital. Good luck. Now, are you sure you're all right? I'll be fine once we locate Natalie. I love you. I love you, too. I'm fine, don't worry, okay? We ought to hear something soon. You want some coffee? Somebody should have seen something by now. Look alive! We've got a lead. Oh, man, your children. They are so lucky. I mean, you... You are such a loving mother. You are so devoted. Then let me go back to them. Please, I'm begging you. Don't! Don't. I wish I could. I really... I, I, I do, but it just won't work. Carter, they need me. They believe me. If I could bring them here, I would. But it is out of the question. Now, you are just going to have to accept the fact that you will never see your children again. Never? Not in no, a no, million no, years? Now, it will Stop. take a little while to adjust to that. I know. But you will like it here. I mean, this isn't some crummy little boat, you know. I mean, it has every convenience. It has music. I'll, I'll play you some music. 